Hey guys, Phil Smy here with another quick, perhaps, Ruby on Rails video. And you know, the other day I was looking through the Ruby on Rails 8, version 8, milestones. And uh, supposedly in 2024, we're going to be getting version 8 of Ruby on Rails. I think it used to be called 7.5, but they decided to call it 8. And one of the things I saw that was completed was adding Breakman by default to new apps. And I was like, uh, okay, what's Breakman? And I went through and I looked and, you know, um, then I looked on YouTube and I couldn't really find anything. So that's why I'm making this video. It seems there was nothing new about Breakman. Everything I could see was like 10 years old, 11 years old, even more. And I thought, well, let's make another video and talk about how it is today to bring Break Breakman in and, wh and what this is going to do for us. So question number one is, what the hell is Breakman? Well, Breakman, it turns out, is this, um, what do they call it? A static analysis security tool that goes through your code and tells you what's wrong, basically. And, and so it goes through, detects anything that can be there, you know, not at runtime, at, at code time, and, and looks for different kinds of uh, errors from cross-site cross scripting, SQL injection, uh, these kinds of things like this. So I thought what I would do is run it on some code. And so the first thing I did is I went to, if you've looked uh, at my YouTube channel recently or anything else, I did this course recently about um, using Ruby on Rails front end against Stable Diffusion for generative AI to produce cool looking uh, gen AI images, uh, you know, so you don't have to pay someone else to do it for you. Anyway, so you can generate these images using a Ruby on Rails front end. I wrote the Ruby on Rails front end and you can take that course. Uh, maybe I'll put a link to it somewhere. And so I thought, well, that sounds perfect. I'm going to use that code. So I installed uh, the gem, which is pretty easily done. You just do gem install Brickman. And then you just type Brickman. It couldn't be easier, actually. And it goes off and it'll do its stuff, goes through. And I got no warnings. So either this code is, well, it's simple, I guess, but it's... There's no warnings. So that wasn't very exciting to do. Um, so what I thought I'd do is go to a little bit of an older thing that I'm working on right now, updating. And so this one, I haven't done it yet. So we're going to do, if I if I try and do break man, you'll see it's an unknown command. So I'm going to do gem install break man. Let's try and get you some errors. And I think that's installed. So let's just run break man. And what it does basically, as you see, it just generates, checks its output into the uh, console here. There we go. We got some errors there, warnings. I didn't really get errors. I got warnings. Cross-site scripting and redirect. So let's take a look at what those are. So the cross-site scripting, where is it? So we've got an unescaped model attribute and I'm doing this bit of code on an HTML page. Um, where I find something called a delivery page and then I chuck the custom HTML. So let's, that's not a very good example, I mean, of what the code actually does. So why don't we take a look? I've got the thing open in Code Insider. So it's this file, line 260. So we go over here, there, and go to line 260. Here... We can see, yes, I've got the delivery page and I'm just putting the HTML. Now I'm doing HTML safe, which I naively thought was going to escape, but I guess it doesn't. Um, so I don't even know where it's getting this. It's not, this bit is not actually a line of code in my software. It's kind of extrapolating this. Anyway, so what I should do, I guess, is do h and that will escape the html and if i save that and just remember that that one was confidence medium i don't know what that mean, confidence means confidence week is the next one is book new 
So let's clear this and run it again. And we should get one less error. I think that four cross-site scriptings and now we have only three. So, and the next one now is that weak. So that doing the H there gets rid of that. Strange about the HTML escape, isn't it? So let's do books show and see, it's probably the same thing. And line 62. Books show line 62. Books show line 62. It's weird, isn't it? It's not actually opening the right file for me. Show books line 62. That was weird. Here it is. So it's the same kind of thing. Again, I'm doing HTML save, which I guess doesn't escape. So I do that. And now it will be, oops, not that. I'll do that, and now it'll be escaped. So there we go. That's the kind of thing that Breakman does for you. And it's got a bunch of um, different things. You can output to an HTML file, for instance, which is something that I think is very handy. I'm just going to do that instead. Um, go up a thing. So we'll do breakman.html. Oh, output. Interesting. Okay, so then we can say open breakman HTML. And so here's the kind of HTML that gives you um, links you to some documentation. Of course, it doesn't open in a new window, but it, it does ex then explain what these redirects are. So it's an unvalidated redirect. Uh, redirects which rely on user spied variables can be used to spoof. Well, yeah. So we can look at some of these, and I think if we click, then we see more of the code. That seems a bit uh, more realistic to me. Interesting that it's finding that. Redirect to book. See, I wouldn't say that's an unsafe redirect myself, but... What do I know? So you can output that. Um, you can output with color. That sounds exciting. Um, I don't know if you can do like that. So I'm just going to dot dot color, American spelling of color. Um, that looks pretty much exactly the same to me. And let's go to another one. So if I go to a bigger project, and that is like Zon Master. Now, I'm crazily, I'm going to run this for you against my production code of Zon Master. And then you'll see a lot more errors because this is a huge application. Very old. I mean, it's um, started eight years ago. And uh, so it's kind of a mono lithic beast um, with tons and tons of code in it. And you can see now that I've got more different kinds of warning types. The cross-site scripting, um, which again is going to be a lot of that HTML escaping. Dynamic render path, that's interesting. File access, mass assignment, redirects, remote code execution, SQL injections, SSL verification bypass, and session settings. So, man, I've got a whole host of problems in there. I'm not so worried about it, but um, it's cool that this is now going to be installed uh, by default in Rails 8, and that, I assume that means it's going to run by default. Um, what's going to happen? Yeah, add in, it will, uh, by default, the gem will be installed doesn't actually say whether it's going to run it or not by default at any time. But there you go. Hope this helps. Um, I'm going to go through this Rails 8 stuff, and whenever I see something pop up, I'm going to try and make a little video. Again, Breakman, I'm being a little facetious. I think it's pretty cool, very quick. I mean, even if the warnings aren't always valid, I think it's pretty interesting. 
anything that makes your code stronger and more secure is good in my opinion. Thanks for watching. What is it? Subscribe. Like, subscribe, bell notification. God, you'd think I'd, I've been on YouTube for everything I would know. Like, subscribe, bell notification. Any comments below, um, be kind. And uh, let's try and chat. And you know, I'm coming uh, to RailsConf 2024 in Detroit. And uh, if you want to say hi, say hello. See you soon.